The year is 1994. Tanya Harding just took out Nancy Kerrigan. OJ Simpson is on the lam, and Major League Baseball was canceled. Honda was winning the middleweight sport bike class, but let's be honest, we all had this. The Yamaha FZR 600 poster hanging in our bedrooms, right next to Michael Jordan and Tiffany Amber Thiessen, probably. Now this bike has the typical story. Boy buys motorcycle. Motorcycle helps boy meet girl. Boy and girl enjoy motorcycle. Boy and girl get married, and then the babies come, and girl says, no more motorcycle. So reluctantly, boy parks a motorcycle in the garage. One year leads to two, two leads to 20, and next thing you know, you're in your mid 40s, pushing your pride and joy out front for the neighborhood yard sale. The story I was told is that this bike was parked 20 years ago, and looking at the inspection sticker is proving that story because the last time this bike was inspected was July of 2003. Somebody got a super sweet yard sale buy. Now this bike in particular is really nice. It's got just over 9,000 miles. It has this sweet paint job and it's a cherry time capsule. Our goal for today is to get this bike up and running and ready to be put back on the road. Let's get to work. Okie dokie. All right, Craig, what you got? First step is battery's dead. In one scenario, would it be sitting for 20 years and the battery wouldn't be dead? None. <laughs> Dude, this bike is awesome. First step, we're going to pull the tank cover off and then the tank and then probably the air box so we can get to the carburetors. Wow. The tank is, man, the tank is pretty much pristine. Look, Ooh, can you see that back yeah. side? Yeah. I just noticed something really cool. Uh, maybe not. At first I thought maybe we don't have to pull this tank because the air box and the carbs are up here, but I think we will have to pull the tank, take that cross member, and then get to the carbs that way. Let's put this back in here and take the air filter, see what the air filter looks like, make sure there aren't any varmint living in there. Some rad 90s varmint. Ah, uh, see? See all that stuff is all gooey and gross. There's some in there. We're gonna wanna clean all that out. Next step. Gonna loosen up these bands and pull the air box. Oh, that air box is already, that one's already loose. Somebody already monkeying with it. Why is that one? It's tight, the band's tight, but the clamp's loose. But Somebody's been in there monkeying with it. Somebody's been monkeying. I guess I could put this up in the air a little bit. I mean, it depends on, I guess, how much you like squatting down. You trying to get a workout in? On a scale of one that don't talk so dumb, don't talk so dumb. You ain't getting a workout in. So far, so good. Let's get this hose off. Okay. Oh, that slides, look. Good? Not good. Not, oh, there it goes. We got one stuck slide there. All right, we're gonna stand this up in the air. We're gonna pull the fairings off and uh, get these carbs pulled. Beautiful panels. Yeah, I really like this bike. All right, Dan, what would you do next? I don't know, you trying to, trying to pull the carbs out? see some cracking here on these intake boots. They look to be superficial, but we want to keep that in mind. Okay, that's loose. Pull this peckhawk handle off. Craig, you still like this bike? Yep. I don't know how they got the fuel clamp thing though on the other side. I don't know how they did that. There. Still love it. Fuel lines get him. Ah, there it is. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, that was fun. That was neat. You're gonna have just as much fun getting it back on? Yeah, no, it'll be better. We're gonna have new fuel line. There it is. Oh, fuel pump. Is there a nut or anything on there? Yes. Want me to do it? Yep. Okay. There it goes. Oh, you got it out. Okay. Oh, it's tight. We need to get that 
light in here so I can see what I'm doing. Look at you, Dan. I have stuff. Do you have things and stuff? Yeah. Do you do things and stuff? Oh, I do all kinds of things. Yeah, but do you do things and stuff? Or just things? Just things, probably. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too good at the stuff. I'll do them, though. Poorly. Oh, for crime I gotta stand on my flipping head. Or I could just walk around the other side of the bike. Is that, is that the next thing you need is, like, suspension ropes? Like you put on a harness and you can just like hang and dangle upside down while you're doing crap like this? Yes. <laughs> all right, did these things loosen up at all? I believe so. It's still gonna be a little fun to get out of there. I'm always paranoid these carburetor junctions get brittle from age. Okay, so we got that out now. We need to do, okay, so that's gonna come along. Let's see, let's get this out of the way. Auto cable is ready to pull. I don't think I need to pull this bracket. And there we have a beautiful rack of carbs. Yeah, I'm loving this. Let's get this throttle cable. I can take the chip cable off yet. Come on. of FZR carburetors. Got some old gas dripping out of there. Oh, oh, smell that. Dude, that'll clean out your sinuses. Hey, hey, hey. So one of the other things with this bike is it does have a slight oil leak. So I want to figure out where that's coming from and we're going to address that as well while we have things apart. Oil is tricky. Oil is tricky to find a leak because it could be leaking here, but maybe it drips down and the wind blows it a little bit. Like you have to really pay attention. Couldn't it be somewhere really bad, like inside the engine? And like yeah. you have to almost take the engine apart? Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> I'd forget it was leaking oil at that point. Just to... <laughs> Park it over a paper towel. <laughs> Let's see. So here I see a drip of oil. If you look, I see a drip right there. And the filter is tight. So there's a plate filter. And then this looks like a plate or something. All right. Let's look at the parts book and see what's going on with that piece. 95. Oil pump. Nope. Oil cooler. Yep. All right. Oil filler screws onto the union bolt. Number one, they're calling an adapter plate. Number three is an O-ring. I'm gonna say we need that O-ring. Darn it. Costs eight ninety five to ship a seven dollar and fifty seven cent O-ring. Can you order some more other stuff? I think it's like 150 bucks to get free shipping. We need a lot of O-rings. Do you need a new drill? Do I just order like another $145 worth of stuff? Cause then we save almost nine bucks. Hmm, yeah. That's like women math. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> Okay, so it's been a couple days. We put together the parts order, got everything ordered. It finally came in a day or two later. We got oil, we got air filters, we got oil filters, spark plugs, carb kits, battery O-ring to make that filter adapter stop uh, leaking, hopefully. Let's get through these carbs and get this bike running. Here, look, you can see what it was. See that, that goo on that needle, the different color? That's what it was stuck on. That was oh. stuck in there. Oh. Yep, now we just have to clean it. Oh my, look how gooey they are. Oh. Oh man, look at that. Look at that nonsense. Yummy. Yeah, that, uh, they are gross. Boy, oh boy. I'm gonna spray a little carb cleaner in there. We need to get those pilot jets out and they are stuck down in there. We need to get this stuff more cleaner. Yeah, way more cleaner. Losing in and soaking. 
And then those will go on top, and then we're going to have to do a batch with those. Okay, so while that's doing its thing, let's do the oil. Man, that's nice clean oil. It's a shame, but it's got to be done. Okay, so we have car parts cleaning and soaking. We're going to change the oil a while and pull that filter. Then we're going to replace that O-ring. That is the plan. And we should be good to go. Hopefully that stops the leak. Carbs should be done cooking. Buzz through them, get them all clean. A little oil on the new O-ring. That goes in there. A little tab gets put in the right position. That is torqued. We're gonna put all this back to, oh boy. There's more than one um, ceiling washer on here. It's like five of them. Let's take these off. We don't want extras on there. That's not good. You never want to double stack ceiling washers. And this has two, three, four. This had four of them on. Put one on, which is correct. And we're going to get the underside here really good and clean just so we can make sure that the oil leaks are all fixed. Okay, drain plug's tight. Oil filter is on. We'll dump some oil in. 2200 cc's. One liter, that's a thousand. So it's going to take two of these plus a little. Okay, back to carburetors. Are we looking, Craig? Looking good. Man, these are really, these are dirty. Are they clean yet? Yep, let's go back together. So impatient. Craig, is the carb put back together yet? Is it done yet? Is it done is yet? Is it done yet? Can you put it, can you put it back in the bike yet? We gotta make sure all this stuff here is uber super clean. Man, these things are nasty. Still nasty. All right, we gotta let those soak a little bit yet. Are we missing a float? Are we missing a float? No, we're not. It's yeah. right before we right there. Oh, thank you. Craig, losing floats. Jeez. What else are you losing? My mind, apparently. Now, like most inline fours, getting the carburetors back in is a bit of a chore. But here's a tip. A little silicone spray on the intake boots and the carbs will slide right in. Hook up the throttle cables and don't forget the choke cable. And here's another pro tip. If you're having a hard time getting the airbox boots to fit over the carbs, heat them a little with a heat gun and they'll pop right on. Now, watch my soul leave my body as I realize I forgot to hook up the choke cable and I need to do this all over again. All right, so we have clean carburetors, air boxes on, clean oil, oil filter, new O-ring for the oil filter base plate, new fuel filter, new battery. Let's turn the key on. See what happens. Fuel pump. What? What was that? That was the fuel pump. Oh, it was doing. It was supposed to do that. Yep. No oh, leaks. Okay. No drips. All right. Let's see if this thing will fire up. Fuel pump. Where would the choke be? Oh, right here. Oh my gosh. What? What'd you do? I didn't hook up the choke. All right. We're gonna see if it starts anyway. All right. Here we go. of sitting. Just gonna let it warm up a little bit and we're gonna sink those carburetors. I wanna check oil level now that it's run for a minute. Got my new digi sink here. I mean, we're really spot about spot on here. 62, 60. I don't know how much closer we're gonna get than that. Maybe a little high on the idle. Idle's probably supposed to be right around 1100-ish. So what sinking the carburetors does, if you look down in here, Dan, do you see that butterfly in there? So when I turn the throttle, see how that opens? So as you roll on the throttle, you open up that butterfly, 
you're creating more air coming through here. As air is coming through the carburetor body with CV carburetors like this, the pressure differential through here is what activates these diaphragms and lifts the slide up, okay? Increasing RPMs. What sinking the carburetors means, or when people say they're sinking the carburetors, what that means is you're taking all those butterflies and setting their initial spot all even. So not that you have like, not that you have one here and then your next one's here and then here and then here. It lines all the butterflies up so that the carb is nice and smooth on acceleration and everything is working in unison. So it actually reads a vacuum. If you look on this bike here, I have these lines running from my sink and they're actually running here to these little adapters I put on the intake manifold. And then the hose goes onto that, goes into the digi sink, and then that is, that is checking the pressures and making sure all the vacuum's the same. That's gonna tell you that your butterflies are all set equally and you're ready to go. And then the way you sink it is, one is your base. One carburetor is gonna be your base carb and you sink the other carburetors to that base carb. And they're generally little screws like this one here is underneath. So there's actually a screw in under here. I don't know, you can't really see my finger, but you can see that plate with the spring and there's a screw. So it'll sink this one right here's a sink. And then there's one here. So four carburetors, three sink screws because one's your base. And that's pretty much how you sink a carburetor. Stand on my head to do this. Okay, I got them all within a point of each other. That's good enough. I'm gonna finish getting this thing buttoned up and then we gotta put the plastics on and take it for a ride. And there you have it, the 1994 Yamaha YZF. Is it a YZF or YZR? The 1994 Yamaha YZR 600. This bike is awesome. 14 year old me is grinning ear to ear. Oh, ran over the GoPro. Finally got a chance to ride one of my favorite bikes of all time. This guy found this bike at a garage sale and it is sitting for 20 years. A fresh battery, a carb clean, an oil change. This thing's ready to go. And of course, still need to fix the brakes and change the tires and do some of that stuff. Man, what a fantastic bike. And there you have it, guys. Just one more fantastic motorcycle that's back on the road again. I love this bike, this thing is so cool. And there you have it guys, after 29 years, I finally got to ride that bike that I had the poster hanging on my bedroom wall when I was just a kid. Oh, I'm excited, this thing is awesome. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe. Check out one of these two videos right here, I know you're gonna love them. I wonder if they'll sell this thing.